lovelies and welcome back to this channel if you're new here my name is belinda strana thank you so much for all the love and support don't forget to please subscribe to this channel turn on notifications so that anytime i upload the video you will be the first person to be notified and to my returning subscribers to those people that share my videos leave commentaries and also educate each and every one of us you guys are the real mvp so guys i came across this video on my for you page on tiktok and i thought to share with you guys where this ancient lady you know decided to come out to explain the internalized way and says in their community or the entire that entire black men that exist in their community that actually affects the you know the level of rate and says that some of their people show to people that looks like me she is talking based on this a star podcast of a lady that came out to talk ill about black men that look like me i'm just going to roll the clip as well as some of all the stitches i was able to put together please give me your own thoughts in the conversation of what you think of this video all right lovelies let's dive into it i want to treat this comment with with kindness and have um a healthy productive conversation around it there are good non-racist east asian women just like there are bad racist east asian women so it's not about like absolutes or like oh the majority of us like there are good people and bad people in every group okay but for those of us that are racist, that are anti-black, anti any other minority, I guarantee you it comes from internalized colorism that we face within our own community. For example, you know, this is my grandfather. That's how Korean men looked two generations ago. You don't really see that anymore, especially like in our homeland. I. I don't want to dissect it too much. Like me, I just wear like SPF 80 because I just don't want to age. But like my brother is a darker Asian. Yes, like he's Korean. But like we don't care. We're Americanized. Korea as a society has a lot of catching up to do, especially with stuff like that. And, um, you know, like feminism, you know gay rights and stuff like that i just want to say i want to acknowledge that it exists but it's not all of us okay just like in every group there are so many of us that have been victimized by our own society and oftentimes you know especially when we immigrate to different countries like the united states it really it really opens our eyes and um, for the most part, we're all really good people. Um, they're, they're good East Asian people. When I said anti-blackness was rife within the South Asian communities, that was an objective truth. It's not a debate. If anything, the comments under my last post prove that. I'm really confused as to what people are not understanding about my last video. So this is a direct question to the South Asian Desi viewers of my last video. Do you deny that anti-blackness exists within our cultures? Do you deny that it's a huge problem within our community? I'm really confused as to how every single person missed the point. So let's go back to basics and address the whole it wasn't about race, stop bringing race into it. Our actions and reactions don't exist in a vacuum. Context always matters. And for that matter, racism doesn't always have to be overt and explicit, it can be subconscious. You don't always need someone to directly use a slur at you to know that they were being racist. In my video, I was highlighting the reactions that I've seen from the South Asian community and how I personally view it as evidence of their prejudice and anti-blackness. The lack of empathy for black women, the dehumanization of black women in our cultures and society, present systemically within our country, in our institutions, is not simply going to go away because someone wasn't overt with their racism, or because you as an individual thought that race doesn't matter in this particular case, or because you feel like people are bringing race into it. People harbour these prejudices, this bigotry, this anti-blackness, and it guides their way of life. It guides their actions and their reactions. So whether or not someone holds their hand up and explicitly refers to race, it doesn't mean that the racial context doesn't matter. It doesn't mean the actions or reactions weren't racialized in nature. This was a very specific case of misogynoir. 
And I would encourage people to look into what that actually means. That intersectionality is really important to understanding why people are so upset at what has gone on. And finally, just stop denying the experiences of black people. You've seen huge parts of the community react to this in a very negative way. And instead of denying their experiences, I think it's just important to hear them out and listen to what they have to say. I think anybody who's willing to be honest with themselves and has spent significant time in any anime space, um, either online or in person, I think they can verify that the anime community can be pretty racist. And... That's not just coming from like black cosplayers getting comments like, oh, this character isn't black. Um, but even within the representations of black or darker skinned people in anime, for example, this, whatever the fuck this is, this, this, the list goes on. Um, that's not to say there's no good depictions of black people in anime. Um, this little grid was online with some depictions of darker skinned anime characters that were done well. But unfortunately, the majority of them are still pretty bad. And a lot of people do ask why this is. And the general answer that people go for is that Japan is not that diverse. There's not many black people in Japan. And these mangakas just don't bother to do any research on how to draw black pe people. But I think that's the easy answer. And... There's some historical nuance to this. I mean, sure, they might not see any black people, but it's not like they just drew an anime character and just drew, made the skin dark and didn't think about, oh, hair texture and features. No, these oftentimes include a lot of tropes that come straight out of, I don't know, antebellum period America. I mean, just look at the fact that there's this mascot that is straight up pickin' style, and it is Japanese. So I think part of the reason you see that kind of, like the, outline with the lips and like the no eyebrows that kind of thing uh comes from the way that japan was exposed to black people and it did not start with world war ii um japan had ongoing trade with portugal for a great period of time before they would trade with any other westerners and um i actually learned that today when i googled it um Picanani comes from likely a butchering of the portuguese word for I think it was just like small, little, whatever. And so the importation of those style of products to Japan did occur and especially occurred in the mid to late 1800s when Commodore Matthew Perry from America broke down Japan and was like, hey, I demand trade. Also, side note, this is how they depicted him. Um, I just think it's kind of funny. But yeah, so unfortunately in the 1800s, minstrel shows were still pretty popular and they were something that did happen on ships with sailors and other like performers who traveled around to entertain soldiers. This is actually a Japanese depiction of one of those um, group minstrel groups and if you look closer you can see that they are white people in blackface. So obviously we've established that this kind of racist imagery has been exported to Japan for quite some time. And on top of that, there were certain Western intellectual ideas that Japan embraced during the Meiji Restoration era. They were trying to modernize, and then they thought modernization meant Westernization. So they took a lot of Western ideas and technologies and applied them to their own context. One of those was social Darwinism. They did a little special take on it where they had Japan at the top, and but it was still um, this idea of race. And obviously race is something that is man-made and like you know look just look at the way japan treated other asians they didn't think oh asians we're all asian asian unity they're, they're like japan special we're at the top but um with social organism it's obviously comes the idea that white men are up here and black men are down here and so america has been pretty i don't know if i'd say i don't want to say responsible because that sounds like i'm uh excusing japan on this but they have encouraged the spread of um racial hierarchies that, you know, even if Japan takes it and says, oh, if white men are at the top and black men are at the bottom, Jap Japanese men are above white men, it's still, you know, exporting that idea. And you can really see that in the wake of World War II. So after Japanese surrendered, um, there were a lot of, like, comfort women, prostitutes, um, just, you know, people who were either destitute and tried 
just had to do whatever they could to get by. And the Japanese government at the time, whatever you know, group that they formed after the emperor surrendered, they were like, they formed this commission for the Western recreation of um, American soldiers. And they were scared that these American soldiers would come and assault the pure Japanese women. And so they had a group of women that they already viewed as tainted, who were either comfort women, prostitutes, or poor women. And they would designate them to be the uh, sexual service for American soldiers. But even within that, there was a racial divide. If a Japanese woman serviced a black man, she was then no longer allowed to service a white man. Um, that's how the American military wanted it. They did not like that racial mixing. And that's also kind of why I hate when people say, oh, it's not all about race. Why do black people try to find a problem and everything? Like, it is about race. I mean, my mom can remember when desegregation happened in schools. Like, the the prevalence and just the deep-rootedness of anti-blackness and the way it has been exported all around the world is very real and very harmful. And trying to pretend that that's not the reality that we live in, um, that's just burying your head in the sand. And so this is just kind of going to try to give some depth to the answer to the questions about like why there are this type of visual trope and um yeah racist depictions in japanese media and i think that this kind of framework can be applied to a lot of different asian countries who you know frankly are oftentimes don't deal with very many um citizens that are not of their specific ethnic group or racial racially asian and so when they do see these outsiders or foreigners or whatever they're drawing upon what they do know and a lot of it does come from racist western depictions of black people i don't understand how some of you guys have not gotten this through your head you are not an ally to the black community nor are you preaching poc solidarity if you just stand back and not say anything when your relatives are using anti-black discourse so in the late 1900s, a lot of Asians moved to the United States. And for a lack of better words, with the immigration laws being so racist, there was a lot of white people butt kissing. A lot of our relatives had to kiss white people's butts to get in this country. But after settling down and getting jobs and making a living for themselves, some of y'all's families never stopped kissing their butts and have made an effort to align themselves with whiteness, therefore normalizing anti-blackness in their own speech within their own POC communities. And it is our job as children of these immigrant families who have normalized anti-blackness in their homes to dismantle and to not stand back when it comes to educating our family, calling them out when they say stuff like this. Because if you're gonna be a non-black POC who serves as a bystander when their family's racist, you are anti-black. Like seriously, Lovelace, like as you all know, there have been some videos that have been going through or going all over the social platform about these, you know, Esther, who happens to be an ancient lady, she came all out on this podcast to talk about how, you know, black women, black men, you know, with the fact that black men may use the word flower, okay, uh, as big as that of black men and all of that. And this got a lot of people reacting. And I actually, you know, took more interest like i was so interested in this particular topic by this young lady this you know asian american woman and she went ahead you know to talk about how these you know set of asian people east asian people even if they have some good type of asian east asian people there is they still have some bad type of asian people so she went ahead to talk about even if you know there are bad asian east asian people there are still good ones there are still good uh, east asian bad people and she uh, you know went further to talking about how it has to do with the entire blackness in their community like in their own community they still face this level of entire you know blackness and because of what they have faced and the way at which you know pan-colored people have tried to 
white wash them to make them believe as uh, if that okay they still have this thing with pan colored people it's not making them to feel some type of you know way that okay they are in some level for them to have this entire blackness within them within their own community what makes you think that they are not going to do that elsewhere or in a, to a fellow poc people why is it that okay anytime things like this of course like trying to you know give examples of things why always using um maybe black people like black women why not use other poc why are they always trying to use you know people that look like me to give an example which they have other poc people that they can actually use as a means of example to describe you know their content of discussions and all of that i know that until you know black and all of the ages between the poc people and you know all of that but that doesn't mean that you should use your predicaments you know to come out and spill whatever you feel that is right when this lady was talking about the you know entire blackness within their culture and all of it, it reminds me of a particular video that i stitched for your page of the by this ricardo this ricardo guy i think he's from hispanic he talks about the entire blackness in the hispanic culture and uh, the way at which it also affects the individual you know thing he even went ahead to talk about how they them themselves they don't actually treat themselves you know well like they tend to discriminate against you when you have a tan skin or something and now the same thing is applying to this asian community or east asian people like for them to actually have this entire thing with them that means coming out to spew this thing is just something that is normal you know just something that is okay this is what happens in our community so me explain it out there or using the same you know method to this you know poc people is not a big deal this is why esther has to come out to spew whatsoever she feel that you know she feel is is right and there is some you know asian people that i must really you know commend the fact that they have to come out to cut out whatsoever thing that is going on in the community you know the stitches this stitch that i put together and i must really you know commend it and he, this other lady that talks about the use of anime the way at which they, they <laughs> decorate this other anime looking like well i don't know like it's actually have a lot of thing to do with your community and the way at which they do their things which i really really commend the fact that they came out here to spill anyway lovelies when i saw this video and the, i got so interested to the fact to actually know what is happening over there even if i am a you know black lady and all of that why not just leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video and please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment we are just here for educational and informative purposes if you have not subscribed to this channel or to this instant please do give a huge video to click on the subscription button like this video and i will see you lovely when i upload the next one